Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Nick Acosta from Let's Grow in Christ, and I want to talk to you guys about the American Gospel Christ Alone documentary that's on Netflix right now, okay? I don't want you to watch it. I don't want people to be led astray with a lot of this doctrine that's taught on this documentary. I'm just going to get to the point, okay? If you want to be biblical, I would not recommend this documentary, okay? That's coming up next. Hey guys, if this is your first time here, listen, I'm going to help you grow in Christ like never before, okay? Our channel is designed to help people grow in knowing the Word of God, knowing God, right? In living for God and in living a personal evangelism lifestyle, okay? Because I think Jesus has called us to do all four of those things, okay? So if this is your first time, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. We're going to help you grow in Christ, and uh, we're going to put out some teachings, testimonies, Bible study clips, um, interviews, raps, spoken word, and things like that that can help you out, okay? So go ahead and subscribe. Um, Let's talk about this American Gospel um, documentary or movie, you know, whatever you want to call it. It's on Netflix right now. Um, I watched the the free hour version of it on YouTube um, a while back, um, a little while ago, and uh, now they have the whole version on Netflix, and I had to check it out. I watched it. I paused um, every time I thought of something or I noticed something. I wrote it down, and I was like, you know what? Let me really write down what I think about this documentary because I fear that Christians are going to take these guys' words as Bible. You know, sometimes they're right. A lot of times they're not right. So I want to clarify a lot of things for you guys here on YouTube, okay? This is my honest and biblical explanation of the documentary. Um, I don't think you should watch it. Um, I don't think it's biblical. I think if you want to be biblical, I wouldn't learn from I wouldn't learn from these guys here. Um, all right, these are my thoughts. Um, they don't come from my, my my just my logic or my emotions or my feelings or or experiences. These are my thoughts that come from my understanding of Scripture. Okay, they come from my biblical viewpoint. And what I see and what I don't see in the scriptures, uh, I've been a believer for uh, over a decade now. Um, Since 2013, I've been pursuing uh, biblical education and I've been wanting to grow um, and really get to know what the Bible says. Okay, I've been doing this and pursuing um, education uh, in different degrees and stuff um, because I really want to teach people what is true and biblical. And not just an American gospel, no pun intended, right? <laughs> um, I have an associate in biblical studies, an associate in advanced leadership, a bachelor's degree in Christian ministry and leadership, a uh, master's degree in practical theology, uh, all from obviously Christian universities, right? I've been in leadership for several different ministries. Um, I have my own ministry. Um, I have lots of experience in like evangelism, outreaches, uh, preaching, teaching conferences, uh, discipleship classes. Uh, I've been a youth pastor, a um, lot of experience in leading uh, Bible studies, counseling, praying for people, all types of stuff, stuff like that okay so um, i'm definitely not a novice okay is what i'm trying to say um I'm, I'm not just a youtuber that just graduated high school or just got saved uh, not to say that there's something wrong with that um but i'm just i'm just trying to help you trust me and trust that what i'm saying comes from a biblical viewpoint um not like a lot of people who just say stuff from opinion or because their pastor told them so um i know what the bible that i read every day says okay so i'm coming from that i'm coming from my stance is from what i see in the bible okay i'm not a novice for sure okay um obviously i don't disagree with everything on this documentary there's a lot of points a lot of things that i agree with and that i'm so glad that they spoke on right um but for the most part i disagree with the overall message um and the reason for this documentary i I don't agree with most of the people who spoke here so let's start with the things i agree with because that list is shorter (laughs) and then we'll finish with what i really don't agree with and i really want to warn people about all right got me let's do it so i agree 
with the whole American dream concept, accomplishing your dreams, wanting to be rich. That's an awful message. That's not gospel. That's not Christ-like. It's not in the Bible. I love the fact that they call that out. Stop listening to preaching that is nothing but motivational speaking and coaching um, that's focused on you being debt free and not settling, not being content with what you have. When the Bible teaches the opposite, be content. Do not be a lover of money. It is the root of all sorts of evil. So I love that. I agree with that. Um, the gospel is more than Jesus um, dying so that you can go to heaven. But I'm still going to live for me and love me and seek my comfort and seek riches. I love that they call that out. That's not the gospel, right? It's not about, okay, I'm going to go to heaven one day, but before I go there, I'm going to live my best life. <laughs> you know, that's 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 not the way to get to heaven. Uh, first of all, Jesus said it's uh, it's not going to be the way. That's not the way. The real way is narrow. Amen. Um, I love the fact that um, they said this, the fact that humans want evil in our natural human flesh drives us to sin. Um, there was a lot of mention about our sinfulness. Um, I just don't think there was enough mention about being able to walk in the spirit, being able to submit to God, to be spiritually minded, to be renewed in our minds and be transformed and, um, you know, follow Christ. Uh, but I did like the fact that they mentioned our sinful nature, the flesh right here. Um, but we must remember that the uh, indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit can change us and we can be transformed and bear good fruit. They spoke about people in the church, right? Um, needing to um, continually hear what the gospel is. I agree with that. I don't think the gospel is preached or taught enough in church to the point where um, the common believer in the congregation understands what it is that they believe. You know, what's taught most is how to get your next blessing, how to go through your week, how to overcome your boss and just all this earthly stuff that is really not spiritual. Right. People in the church need to continually hear what the gospel is instead of the motivational and oftentimes vanity based ways that they can improve their lives. They can improve their bodies. They can improve their marriage, finances, careers, confidence and all this stuff. I agree with that. I love that. Um, a lot of people don't understand the gospel. That's something that was said in this documentary. I completely agree with that. Uh, something else they said was they just, uh, that a lot of people, they just know church. They just know worship songs, uh, Christian rap, Christian movies, but not the true gospel. And it shows in their lives. That's absolutely true. Um, somebody said this guys, somebody said, if you're preaching about Daniel <laughs> and the point is, dare to be a Daniel, <laughs> then it's not about Jesus. I love that. I agree with that. Um, they said, if you're preaching the book of Revelation and it's about Israel and Russia, then it's not about Jesus. <laughs> you know, I, I love that they spoke on these things because I've heard these messages over and over and over again um, in churches and it's 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 not going to help you grow. It's not discipleship. Come on, y'all. It's, it's not discipleship. Right. We're supposed to make disciples and equip the saints for the work of ministry. Stuff like this is not what Christ had in mind. OK, uh, somebody said, even though Jesus is not the content or topic of discussion everywhere in the Bible, he is the center of it all. Right. Um, God is not a supporting actor in my life movie. I forgot who said that, but I love that. Yeah, listen, every story in the Bible is not about how how you can get something from God. Like God is not your genie. God is not here, right? To, to submit to you, to be subject to you. You are here to submit to God, to be subject to God. God is not a supporting actor in my life movie. I am an actor in his movie. It's about him. I love that. This is so good. I love that. It's pure. Um, Check this out. Our lives are about God and not us. We are to live for him. We are to glorify him. We are to obey him. We are to worship him. We are to bring people to him. We are to say what he says. It's about him and not us. And that's a good message that this documentary um, brought forth. I, I like that. I, I, like, I like that a lot. Um, I love how they explained the David and Goliath story. They elaborated on the fact that we are not the David. 
Um, but Christ is the David in that story who defeated the giant that everyone was scared of, a.k.a. sin. That's the gospel. That's powerful. Come on. Um, uh, I like when they said something uh, along, this along these lines here. Uh, don't read the Bible as if you are always David, Daniel, or some other hero of the faith. You can be the Pharisee. You can be the scared Israelite. <laughs> you can be. You can even be the one who needs to repent. You know. So it's very dangerous when we're always reading the, the Bible and the stories about David and Daniel and all these people, as if we're the hero and not the person who is wrong, not the person who is an enemy of God, not the person who needs to repent or who is in a rebellion or adultery, etc. Right. So it's very important that we don't always place ourselves as the hero, right? Just like little kids. Little kids always want to be the, the good guy in the in, in the movie, the hero in the movie. I want to be Batman, right? So it's very care we got to be very careful. It's very important. Um, the prosperity gospel. They said that the prosperity gospel is a self-serving, self-loving gospel. Listen, I want this, I want that, and my God is gonna get it for me. You know, that, that's the type of message that the prosperity gospel is. It's not biblical. Uh, it's like, you know, when I look at it and then I read the scriptures, it's like, do they really get this from one verse? <laughs> you know, it's it, it's not a repeated concept and teaching and instruction to the church. Um, the love of money being bad, seeking and living for money it being bad, that is way more consistent in scripture and repeated in scripture than prosperity or or something like that okay so i love the fact that they called out the prosperity gospel and all these preachers who are getting rich who are manipulating people so a thousand dollar seed this and that god's not gonna bless you unless you give this to the ministry that's wicked you know th these people are going to um have to answer to god for that that's unbiblical i love that this documentary called the money hungry money loving preachers hirelings out because that's what they are jesus said that a hireling is somebody who has a flock and doesn't really care about the flock because when the wolf comes they will just run away and let the flock be gotten by the wolf why because they only care about being paid that's a hireling that's not a true shepherd so we have to call these things out and i'm glad that they did so in this documentary i love it um, the Christian life is not a, let's see what God is going to get us today thing. I love that they spoke about that. Um, it's a, it's a, I'm serving God today and I want his will to be done. Not my flesh's will. That's what it's about. So I love that they called out that self-serving when Jesus came to serve, um, to do the will of the father. Amen. If Jesus did it, how much more do we have to make sure we're, you know, submitted and humble and, and prayed up to do that, right? <laughs> Many people are not seeking after God, but instead they're seeking after a God of their own choosing, a God who will give them what their flesh wants. I love that they spoke about that in this documentary. I completely agree. Um, they talked about people wanting the gospel um, that elevates the gift above the giver. Exactly. That's I see it all over America. I've, my wife and I, we've been part of uh, of 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 of, uh, of prosperity gospel churches, uh, maybe even a, a mega church. I'm not sure if that's considered a mega church, or at one point it was. But we were part of a church like that before, and it's 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 not true teaching. You know, we 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 got out of there as soon as we were able to realize it wasn't biblical. As soon as we got serious enough with God and serious enough about truth seeking, um, that we just saw how it didn't line up in the Bible, and and, and we ran away. You know, as, as we all should, if we really love Jesus and want to follow him and keep his word. Amen. So the American gospel. So the message of the American gospel, um, as they, you know, as they spoke on, on, the, on the topics that I agree with, um, is basically a gospel that has to be rejected, that has to be exposed. Why? Because it's a, it's a message that declares that what matters is on the earth and it's now and it's current. Um, that's the message. But, <laughs> you know, the Bible contradicts that all the way. You know, the Bible talks about being spiritually minded, um, being focused on eternity, right? Heavenly minded. Set your mind on things above. Seek those things which are above where Christ is, right? Um, build for yourselves treasures in heaven, not on earth. So the American gospel contradicts Jesus all the way. So it's not a Christian gospel at all all right they want you to focus on your current natural lives they want you to focus um 
at being happy, at being prosperous, at being comfortable, and it's just self, self, self. So you know it's a fleshly gospel. It's 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 carnal. It's it's doctrines of man because it it, it wants to help and give to the flesh, not to the Lord, not to spiritual things and focus on spiritual issues. You know, it's all about self. It's about flesh. It's about earth. And it's absolutely anti-biblical. All right. So the American gospel is anti-biblical. Um, I love how they emphasize the fact that we're not gods. <laughs> you know, there's only one God. We are his creation. He is in ours. I love that. We are not gods. All right. Uh, initially, we were made in his image and likeness. Then the image got distorted. We fell. Then he came right to, to reconcile the world to himself. Um, we're able to be forgiven and filled with his spirit. So we're able to be led by his spirit. And, and now we're his sons and daughters. Um, but we're, we're still not creators. We're still not gods. Um, and, and definitely not with this sinful flesh that we have to overcome and deny and, and reject and put under subjection every day. <laughs> right. Uh, we're very different. Um, but I mean, we are his children and he does command us to, to walk like him. Um, so at the same time, we're not gods. Uh, I love how they call that out. Um, they said things like, uh, if your teachings are approved by Oprah, <laughs> um, if your teachings, uh, can be heard by Muslims, you know, if you can preach to a Muslim or to a homosexual, to an atheist, and they don't get offended by your preaching, <laughs> then it's really, it's probably not the gospel. It's really not the gospel if you can, you know, preach to a homosexual and an atheist and a Muslim and a Buddhist and a new age person, uh, and they don't get offended, they don't want to like stone you or repent one of the two, then it's, it's probably not the gospel. You know, I love how they spoke on that. It's, it's so true. It's so true god's been dealing with me heavy about this topic these last few years um and and, and i love it it's it's so biblical um i love how they touched on the mani the manipulation that these preachers walk in when they tell um their audience that if they speak against the preacher uh that they'll get cursed in some way by god you know that, that's such manipulation that's junk um is 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 this trend you know where people uh, they, they 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 get trained by these um televangelists and these mega church preachers and even small churches they, they people get abused and manipulated all the time by people who don't want to be Christ like and they want to do what they want to do and sell themselves serve themselves um it's it's it, it trains people to not think for themselves you know and to not question their theology like we're supposed to be able to question people's theology and teachings it's all over the new testament guys false teachings false doctrines False pastors, false preachers, false teachers, false prophets. It's talked about so many times in, in the teachings of Jesus and his apostles later on, right? If it says that you need to turn your back on some, if it says um, give him away to the enemy, you know, if it says to not even be seen having lunch with them, you know, if it says that you need to, uh, uh, it needs to be at least two or three witnesses when you're calling out a leader of the church, then it's obvious we're supposed to be addressing people and addressing doctrines that are not godly and biblical. Like it's just common sense when you read the Bible without adding or taking away from it, just reading it plain out. You'll see that plain as day people do get called out even their names, right? And I, I don't, you know, I, I'd rather be the one who calls out the false doctrines because I want people to grow. That's what, that's, that's what we're about. We want people to grow. You know, we're not about, um, you know, naming everybody. And it, it's more about naming the truth and naming what's not truth. Um, so that, uh, by knowing that, you know who not to listen to and who to listen to, right? I agree that, th that when we approach unbelievers in public, uh, we shouldn't just heal them. We shouldn't just pray for them. Uh, we shouldn't just tell them that God loves them. We should tell them about Christ and what they need to hear in order to repent and turn to God, right? Um, we shouldn't just tell them that God loves them, uh, but we must really preach the gospel and not just do good things for people, right? Um, because we see that all over the New Testament. Jesus called us to preach the gospel, right? Jesus was telling people, go and sin no more right? Um, Jesus was telling people, give away everything you have. You know, he, he was very challenging, very convicting. Uh, so, you know, I, I've been guilty of this. You know, once I started 
to go out and and minister to people. Um, I have been guilty of not really, you know, telling everybody that I that I encounter and that I minister to to repent uh, or that they're in sin um, and, and, and explain the whole gospel to them. You know, I've, there's been a lot of times where I just told them that God loved them, told them God wants them to take him serious, um, seriously, um, lay hands on them, you know, seeing healings and things like that. Uh, uh, pray for them. Um, so I've been guilty of not really presenting the whole gospel every time I encounter somebody um, uh, to, to to witness to them, you know. And I think it's it's more biblical to tell somebody to repent um, and that they're not right with God and how to get right with God, you know. Because you know, it's really no point just to tell people God loves you. It's truth. But you, you have to help them out. Like, you know, it's just like giving them, <laughs> you know, uh, um, it's just like giving them uh, an answer to a multiple choice question, but not really letting them read the question <laughs> of why this is the answer. You know, God loves you. Why and how and how did he prove it? And how do I love him back? And how can I prove that I love him? Back? You know, you got to tell him the whole gospel. So um, it's just like you, you shouldn't tell somebody God loves you and walk away. You also shouldn't tell somebody repent and walk away. A lot of people don't even know what repent means. If you, if you guys want to be honest. Right. So it's good to tell them what they need to repent of. Right. And how did God prove he loves them? So it's 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 everything, the, the whole gospel. So God's really been been pushing me these last few years um, on, on, on telling people the whole gospel, not just God loves them, not just be healed in the name of Jesus, not just let me pray for you, not just telling them my testimony and how God saved me. Um, and, and I was born again in a jail cell facing life in prison um, because of a first degree attempt at murder charge, right? He's been pushing me to share the whole gospel with people uh, when I encounter them so that, you know, I feel like I'm actually being a disciple at work because you never know when it when, when somebody's going to die. You never know if you're the only Christian they're going to encounter, right? You never know if you're supposed to be planting seed or watering seed or both. God wants to bring increase. God wants laborers out there to bring the harvest and we must be preachers of the gospel right? We must be witnesses of Christ. And we, we only say God loves you. Or we don't, when we only say repent, you know, you're going to burn, burn, turn or burn. And we're not really sharing the whole gospel and helping people really believe like they can if they hear the whole truth. Amen. So um, I, I love how they emphasize not just telling people God loves you and healing them, uh, which I, you know, I've done, you know, years ago in the past. And, you know, I've, I've, I've turned from that. You know, the Lord showed me, hey, what's more consistent in scripture, you know, telling people about my love and and just blessing them or 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 or, or, or yeah, telling them about the whole message, why I came and in, 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 in everything. And, and that's what I've been doing. You know, um, I agree that we must not withhold any uh, portion of the gospel from people, right? Including the reality of God's wrath, including the reality of hell, including the reality um, of the need to repent, to turn from your sins, to leave your wicked ways and turn to God and obey his commandments. We have to tell people the whole truth. Amen. But listen up, guys, to be biblical and to be real with you, withholding the truth about the power of the Holy Spirit that works through believers, withholding the truth about healings and things like that is also us withholding portions of the gospel too, right? If we tell people, go evangelize, but don't believe in healing, don't believe in, in, in casting out demons, don't believe in telling people to repent, you know, we're still holding back the gospel, right? Because Jesus and his original disciples did these things along with preaching the truth. So let's be real. They told the truth. They healed people, right? They were nice to people. They showed mercy. They lifted up lame people. They healed blind people. They cast out demons from people. They told them about hell. They told them to repent. They told them to be baptized. They told them to leave their wicked ways, right? They told them to go and sin no more. But they saw a lot of healings and miracles on the way, right? So we can't reject some of the gospel. If you don't want people to go, go around telling people that God loves them without telling them to repent or telling them about hell, 
then you also shouldn't want people going around telling people about hell and about judgment, but not practicing what Jesus practiced and taught his disciples to practice, which is to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. He said, behold, I give you power over serpents and scorpions, over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. In my name, you will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. He said, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out demons, heal the sick. Listen, guys, we can't take away and hold back portions of the gospel. Let's not be biased. And unfortunately, this documentary is very biased. A whole bunch of cessationist people, Baptist people, right? Reformation people, right? Calvinist people, a whole bunch of John MacArthur followers. That's who are making the, a documentary like this. And they're very biased. They don't believe in the power of the Holy Spirit, right? So they're, they're, they're teaching some good stuff, but they're leaving out a lot of truth. And that's not the way, okay? That's not the way, guys. Bad theology hurts people. That's something they said, and I completely agree. Unfortunately, they're teaching a lot of bad theology too. So that's why I got to make this video, because even though some stuff was good, a lot of stuff was bad, bad theology. So let's talk about it. OK, um, they said that we must be content with what we have. I love that. Paul teaches that in Philippians four. We have to be content with having a lot or with having a little, just like Paul was. Right. Uh, Paul taught this. Right. I'm content. I have abundance. I'm content if I have lack. That's gospel. Being thankful to God throughout any situation. But this is the problem. The context of what Paul wrote is having money and having things and not having them. That's the context of being content. In this documentary, they make this they make this scripture mean something that the original scripture does not mean. They make it out to look like Paul was talking about sickness and health. No, no, no. Paul was talking about having stuff, not having stuff, having abundance, having lack. In this documentary, they turn it around because of their theology, right? I don't believe in healing, right? Not having sickness and having sickness, not having good health and having good health. So they twist the scriptures. Don't believe this. I don't, I don't agree with this at all, guys, because they're just, again, twisting up scripture, just like the prosperity gospel um, preacher twisted scripture, right? A lot of people in this documentary are twisting scripture. Listen, just because you don't believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, because somebody taught you that, right? Because somebody has to teach you that. Because if you if you get saved in a cave or a jail cell or, or a jungle somewhere and you read the whole New Testament, you will never get out of it the fact that the gifts of the spirit stop with the apostles. You will never see that Christians are not supposed to walk in healings and in the power of the spirit. You won't get that. You have to get that in seminary or going to a church sitting under a teaching of somebody who does not believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Okay. You have to get taught this stuff by somebody who is mad or hurt that they were never healed or that their mother died early. Something like that. It's not in scripture. So be very, very careful with this documentary because even though they say some good stuff, they teach a lot of unbiblical, bad theology and carnal doctrine. Amen. Now let's get to the good stuff. <laughs> I already touched on a couple of them. Let's really get to my, I do not agree with this list. Okay. Let's talk about it. All right, so what do I not agree with? I don't agree with the emphasis on the gospel not being about us living holy, about us bearing good fruit, because we're just jacked up people at the end of the day. Listen, we were born sinners. We sinned. We needed forgiveness. We needed to be born again. We still have sinful flesh. We still need to overcome temptation. We still have the great ability to sin because of the same flesh and because we need to renew our minds. I agree with that. However, the Bible says that we ought to be holy in conduct. That means behavior. That means works and doing as our father in heaven is holy. The Bible says that we are to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. The Bible says that we're, su we're to submit to God and resist the devil, right? That we ought to have good works. We were actually called to do good works, right? The Bible says that faith without works is dead. So there's a big emphasis in this documentary um, on not 
having to bear good fruit or not even being able to live holy. And that's so unbiblical. That's not gospel. Okay. God empowers us and commands us to live holy. It says those who used to steal, steal no longer, but work with your hands and give to those in need. So it tells us to do the opposite of what we used to do. How can we do that if we're just so jacked up? Why? Because of the spirit. Okay. So we are supposed to live differently in a righteous way. That's why it's important that we read the scripture without being biased, right? Without putting our pastor's teachings above Jesus's teachings, because the Bible clearly states, do not walk in darkness, walk in the light, practice the truth, practice righteousness. What does righteousness mean? We know. We clearly know being righteous or practicing righteousness is the opposite of walking in sin, okay? The Bible says he is faithful and just to cleanse us of all unrighteousness if we sin, not when we sin. The Bible says he is able to keep us from stumbling. The Bible says to keep yourselves, purify yourselves, prepare yourselves for the bridegroom's return. Come on, guys. We can't teach that there's no way out of sin, the Bible clearly states that God makes a way of escape from temptation. That's just, you know, the, the whole list of the fruit of the spirit is the opposite of sin in the works of the flesh. Come on. It says, if you walk in these works of the flesh, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. So <laughs> there's no way out. Come on. It's just so contradicting. We can't listen to that. Be careful with these teachings, guys. Um, I don't agree with the undermining of God's expectations and standards for Christians. Like he's called us to bear good fruit by the spirit. Amen. That's why it's important we read, we pray, we fast. Um, it's important that we get good teaching, biblical teaching. It's important that we learn how to um, deny ourselves. Amen to offer our bodies as living sacrifices, right? That's why it says we can use our bodily members as instruments of righteousness, no longer as instruments of sin, right? You are no longer what slaves to sin, but slaves of righteousness. It's just so contradicting to what they teach, you know? Get in the word, guys. You know, you can't believe everybody who makes, who has the, enough money or resources or connections to make a documentary, okay? All right? Um, they attempted to shut down the need of morality. You know, they try to expose this false doctrine of um, of uh, of morality. Right. And it's like, hold up. <laughs> you know, if, 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 if living morally righteous, it's not the gospel, then you have to throw out too many scriptures, <laughs> so many scriptures. Right. Why would he even why would he even list a qualification for a minister of the gospel? Not a husband of a, 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 of more than one wife. You know, a good father, one who, who who has order in his house, not somebody who's drunk, not a drunk guy, not an angry guy who can't control his temper. <laughs> if if it's not about morality, <laughs> then we got to throw away most of the New Testament, to be honest. So that's false. Um, when referring to preaching on morality and on doing good, someone said this. Check it out. They said, you're giving them a goal that you'll never be able to attain. So they're telling you. You will never live right. So just get over it. Just worship Jesus, go to church, and still live with the expectancy to sin and jack up. That's not the gospel, guys. Paul said, look, I haven't reached and attained perfection yet, but boy, I'm fighting for it. I'm training myself. I'm disciplining my body, putting it under subjection so that, you know, I can just fight the good fight of faith and run with the race with endurance that's set before me. I can persevere. I need to look ahead and not behind. Listen, guys, I need to train. I need to get the price. I need to get the goal. I need to reach the kingdom of God. I I don't want to be disqualified. I must work. I must be intentional about growing in Christ, about keeping the word of God, about saying no to my flesh and saying yes to God. Paul taught this, guys. Paul. <laughs> and, and, and these people are saying, you will never be right. You will never be able to, to stop getting drunk or stop watching porn and stop lying and no they might not be able to because of the bad doctrine they've taught they've been taught so they're not expecting the fruit of the spirit in their lives just like the other people are not expecting the gifts of the spirit in their lives be careful with this false unbiblical doctrine okay um this is a big one guys uh in this documentary they teach that people are saved by faith alone stop stop 
I agree. Justification comes by faith. We are justified by faith, right? With the heart one believes unto righteousness. I completely agree. But this is what they add to scripture. They say, we don't need works to be saved and receive eternal life. Ah, they said that anyone who believes in faith plus works is Catholic <laughs> and is not a Bible-based Christian. However, I'm not a Catholic. I am a Bible-based, Bible-believing Christian. I have read the works of Martin Luther. I am formally educated, biblically educated, but I disagree. Uh, because unlike Martin Luther and unlike... A lot of these denominations that are followers of Martin Luther, um, I don't throw away the book of James. I actually consider the book of James a book of the Bible, of the Holy Word of God. And the problem with Martin Luther and a lot of these people is that they don't consider the book of James to be a part of the Bible. Um, but it's in the Bible. And I believe that these teachings are Holy Spirit inspired, God breathed. Um, so when James says, Faith without works is dead. Um, you better show me your faith by your good works. Uh, then I take it as the word of God. And I believe that if you're truly saved because of justification by faith, then that justification will continue as you walk in the spirit, as you renew your mind, as you start bearing good fruit and doing good works. Jesus said, do good works. Let your good works be seen because good works glorify God. They're trying to tell us that accepting that you can never have good works will glorify God. That's the opposite. That's anti-gospel, anti-Bible. Faith without works is dead. That means if they have no faith, they have no justification. That means they're not saved. Okay? So what brings salvation? Justification. What brings justification? Faith. What proves faith? Works. It's all connected. Don't throw away the book of James. That's what they're doing. I don't accept that. Um, they quoted Romans 8.1, guys. Romans 8.1, a lot of people know it. It says, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. That's Bible. There's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. However, when something says who, <laughs> who, or if, or but, there's a condition there. And unfortunately for them, um, Romans 8, 1 has a condition. It says there is condemnation to those who are in, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, right? Who do not walk according to the flesh. There's the condition, but according to the spirit. So there's no condemnation to who? Those who are in Christ plus those who walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. They stated that once you believe and become righteous, you can't lose your salvation or go back to becoming an enemy of God and a sinner. That's so unbiblical. Paul talked about people departing from the faith, walking away from the faith, becoming enemies of the cross. Come on now, guys. Revelation talks about Jesus spitting churches out of his mouth, <laughs> like spit. That means they were in him and no longer in him anymore because he didn't like their works, their lifestyle, their choices. Come on, guys. So Romans 8.1 says there is no condemnation. Why? Because you get forgiven. But if you don't continue in that righteousness, just like Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. Now go and sin no more. Be healed. Your sins are forgiven. Sin no more so nothing worse comes upon you. Just like Jesus said that, the gospel tells us the same thing. Yeah, we're justified by our faith. We get born again and forgiven of our sins, receive the Holy Spirit. But we have to continue in the faith and we have to grow up. We have to mature. We have to start bearing good fruit. Why? Because if you're truly in the vine, then the vine is going to cause you, the branch, to bear good fruit. If not, then it proves you're not in the vine. Okay, so we have to abide in him by bearing good fruit and bearing good fruit is basically us walking in the spirit. And if we're walking in the spirit, then, yeah, there's no condemnation for us because condemnation is basically you being guilty, guilt of an, of an offense. If you're condemned by God or God's law, it means you are guilty of doing something unrighteous under God's standard. That means walking in the flesh, not the spirit. That's what Romans 8, 1 says, okay? That's a condition. Righteous living is expected, guys. Let's stop rejecting the true gospel. 
Jesus said, if you abide in my word, you are my disciple indeed. <laughs> um, Jesus said, why do you call me Lord and not do what I say? So doing what Jesus says to do is part of being a Christian, not just believing and listening to Hillsong on the way to church um, and, and on the way to the buffet. Like, come on, man. That's, you know, that's, that's, that's weak Christianity. That's not biblical Christianity. We have to bear good fruit. Um, the ex-atheists. Okay. So check it out. There's a, there's a couple in this documentary and a lot of the, 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 the stuff that has to do with healing and, you know, humility and contentment comes from um, just a couple, a mere couple, you know, uh, doesn't come from God, doesn't come from Jesus, doesn't come from a story in the Bible, doesn't come from the Apostle Paul or Peter. It comes from an ex-atheist couple. It comes from their perspective. So it seems as if this documentary attempted to prove that healing is not something likely or probable, even as a Christian, um, uh, or, or that preachers who believe in healings are wrong through or because of this couple's experience. So they try to prove that healing is not for today or that preachers who preach about healing are wrong because of just one couple's experience and perspective, uh, which is like, it's crazy. It's berserk to me that you're going to make a whole documentary because of a couple who didn't get healed. And it's like, no, like we're supposed to live according to the Bible, according to what Jesus lived and taught and according to what the original church in the book of Acts looked like. And it didn't look like this couple, I'll tell you that. Um, well, listen, we are not to get our theology from someone's experience. I don't care who you are, okay? So if you were an atheist, if you were married to another atheist, if you were obsessed with eating healthy and keeping yourself healthy through food and through exercise, like to the point of obsession and extremity, to the point that your relationship with your husband was based on health, and you even did CrossFit throughout your 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 pregnancy, and then got sick. I, I can't I, I can't take your worth. You know I I, I can't take that. I, that's that don't sound like you know that don't sound like Jesus. That don't sound like Paul. That don't sound like Peter. Okay, it seems like you were living for yourself. Uh, it seems like you were living for your body, full of vanity, the love of self, wanting to look good in the mirror. That's not gospel. Um, that's not what a disciple of Jesus does. That's vanity and love for self. Um, and it's not faith in Christ's covenant with you, keeping you whole, but in your own natural efforts that even unbelievers can do. Come on, there's so many, you know, crossfitters and personal trainers and diets and, you know, just go on Instagram, go on Facebook, go on YouTube. You know, everybody wants to be fit. Everybody has the answer to good health. And most of these people are unbelievers who don't have co covenant with God, who have not been forgiven of their sins, who are still, according to the Bible, enemies of God and cursed. And here are Christians learning from them, trying to be healthy like they are. But um, this is the problem. I don't think this woman was living right. And so God was not pleased with her. Um, how, how can we conclude that God doesn't heal or doesn't want the righteous to be healed based on this woman's experience? This experience took place while she was living for herself and not for Christ. She was living for her flesh and not by the spirit. So why are we trying to make a whole theology out of her? You know, I love her. I love I love her husband. I hope she gets healed, you know, um, but I don't think she will be because of the theology she believes. Right. Um, as you believe, it will be so. Right. So, you know, it's, it's very hard for somebody to experience or live something if they believe quite the opposite, okay? That's why the person that you sit under, the teaching you get, the pastor you have is very important as a Christian because your life flows from that belief in your heart, amen? Um, another person on here is a man named Justin Peters uh, who has cerebral palsy. He's in crutches, his legs don't function, and he can't really stand. Um, he can't really walk on his own. He, he he basically went to a prosperity gospel preacher's conference. This is what happened. This is a story he told. Um, so he went to a prosperity gospel preacher's conference or some type of televangelist conference when he was a kid um, and he was very sick and he wasn't healed, right? His father got offended. Um, he wasn't healed. Uh, instead of him being healed, the woman said this because it was a woman minister. She said, she told his father that he needed to give money to a ministry for the healing to happen. <laughs> that's so wicked. That's that's so unrighteous. Um, that's horrible. You know, I 
I could see why, you know, he, um, his father had, were, were so impacted by this horrible experience, by this hireling, um, this, you know, horrible um, minister um, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a fake gospel. Um, this woman was obviously a lover of money. Um, she was not pure hearted. Um, she was a, a minister um, of a false gospel. It seems like this is what led this Justin guy to have such a resentment and bitterness towards preachers who talk about money or healing. You know, um, I think we have to be very careful uh, when we get our theology from um, the person who hurts us. You know, they had a bad experience with somebody not preaching the whole gospel and therefore they reject something that is gospel um, just because of their offense. You know, I think we have to be very careful about that. Once your ministry becomes you talking about other people's ministries, you've 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 been led astray. <laughs> you know, if, if you if you call yourself a minister and, and and call yourself having a ministry, um, all worst case scenario, most of what you're doing should be preaching the gospel, evangelizing, teaching people the Bible. It shouldn't, it should be you pointing to Jesus, not just you pointing to other people who are not doing it the way you think it should be done. You know, if your ministry becomes ministry, their ministry, that ministry, no, no, no to that minister, no to that minister, yes to that. If that becomes your ministry, you don't really have a ministry. So you got to be very careful about letting your experiences um, lead you to bitterness and resentment because then you don't become useful. You know, you, you might say some good stuff here and there, but you're not really doing ministry. Jesus called us to make disciples, okay? Uh, we are supposed to warn, you know, and I'm basically doing that right now in this video, but we're not supposed to make that our entire ministry. That's not uh, that's not a gift of Jesus to the church from what I see in the Bible, all right? <laughs> that's not the ministry of helps. <laughs> that's not the ministry of an apostle or a prophet or a teacher or a pastor or evangelist, okay? Um, it's not a gift of the Spirit, okay? We should um, expose darkness, but we should preach the gospel. We should make disciples and, and teach the Bible. Okay. So just use that as a good, as a good, you know, measure whenever you, whenever you see somebody just focus on other people, other ministries, that means they don't really have one of their own. And they might just be out there as long rangers and cowboys, not really being called to ministry. They just made a ministry out of their offense and bitterness. Okay. I'm not saying that what that woman did to this Justin Peters guy and his father was right. What I'm saying is, um, he now doesn't believe in healing because he himself was not healed. Okay. He's not letting the Bible, um, determine his theology. He's determining his theology by his experience or lack of, okay? And that's not good. He needs to change his mind. He needs to repent, okay? Um, I believe that these money-hungry preachers, um, those who manipulate people for their financial gain, I believe they'll be judged by God, absolutely. I believe that uh, they will not be found worthy of the kingdom of God. That's just my opinion. According to what I read from Matthew to Revelation, these prosperity gospel preachers, these people who take advantage of people, people like that woman who told Justin Peter's father that he needs to give in order for the boy to be healed, I believe they're going to be judged by God. And if they don't repent, they're going to burn in hell forever. That's just what I see in scripture. You understand? So that's, it's just dangerous. I wouldn't even play with that, guys. Um, I don't think that we are all supposed to be rich. I don't, I don't believe that. I don't, I don't believe that we're all supposed to try to get rich. As a matter of fact, I believe none of us are supposed to try to get rich. We're not even supposed to focus on money. Listen, Jesus said, don't even focus on money or, or I'm sorry, on clothing, food and drink. That's like ba basic necessities. He didn't even say not to focus on, on, on a house. Like we're not even supposed to focus on food, drink and clothing. So much less we're supposed to be focusing on careers and getting rich and mortgage and savings and retirement. We're not supposed to focus on that stuff. We're supposed to see the kingdom of God and his righteousness first and just allow God, trust God to provide food, drink, and clothing. And that's it. Our whole life is supposed to be devoted to Jesus, not to things. Okay. So listen, guys, trying to get rich. All Christians are supposed to be rich. Uh, and all that stuff is a false gospel to me. I don't see that in the Bible. You know, we're not even supposed to focus on money at all. Listen, guys, we're supposed to focus on God and trust him for tomorrow because we can't even add a hair to our head. You know, I think that's a false gospel for sure. 
I'm I'm glad people are calling it calling it out. I just wish they would call it out um, without throwing away other biblical truths, right? Um, in regards to sickness, guys, aside from any mention of money and how these money loving preachers have used healing and sickness for this honest and unrighteous gain, aside from people using healing the wrong way. Healing is still biblical, it's still New Testament, it's still Christian, it's still Christ-like, and it's still the kingdom of God, okay? Um, I don't care what you believe, I don't care what teacher you like, if they're teaching you to not believe in healing and miracles, they're teaching you to not believe in the Holy Spirit, okay? Um, if somebody's teaching you that a miracle or healing that a Christian does in the name of Jesus through the laying on of hands or whatever method, if somebody's teaching you that these miracles and healings are a work of Satan, are done by a demonic spirit, then they sound like the Pharisees who tried to say that Jesus was casting out demons by the prince of demons, Beelzebub. Jesus told these Pharisees, if you call the work and the miracles of the Holy Spirit demonic, that is you blaspheming the Holy Spirit and you will never get forgiven of that. All right. So you have to be care very careful about listening to these cessationists that claim that the power manifestations of the Holy Spirit are demonic because you are now blaspheming the Spirit. Okay. And I don't know what that looks like in eternity. I don't, I don't know what that looks like in Judgment Day. I don't, I don't see a mention of that after Jesus mentioned it. So I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to make something up, but I'm just going to tell you, it sounds very serious. Don't mess around with it. Stop calling stuff demonic when you, you know, you, you, you barely know, <laughs> you know, you barely know, you know, if, if you don't think the Holy Spirit heals people, God heals people. If you don't think people can, can, can bring healing to others in the name of Jesus with all these scriptures that we have in the Bible that tells us that we can then, you know, I, I wouldn't even try to teach anybody. Just, you know, make sure you understand the Bible before you start teaching people, okay? Because, you know, Jesus warned against that. You know, you blaspheme the Spirit. There's no forgiveness of that. Be careful. I don't know what that looks like in eternity again, but I know that's what Jesus said. Um, I believe that healing does come as a part of justification and righteousness. I believe that it came as a, as a curse by God to his enemies, to those who are unrighteous in sin, in rebellion, um, walking in the flesh. I believe that um, sickness came as a curse um, to the unrighteous, to the rebellious. And once you're forgiven of your sins and once you enter the new covenant with God, right, um, that you have the ability through Christ, only through Christ, to be healed and to stay healed as long as you don't return to your sin. This is why Jesus said, be healed. Don't sin no more. Unless something worse comes upon you. Don't you think that's connected? Doesn't it, isn't it obvious that sickness and sin is connected? And that healing and forgiveness of sins or righteousness are connected? I think it's pretty obvious. You have to get taught otherwise, guys. Don't listen to that nonsense. Um, I also believe that the Lord might judge you. If, if, if you're a Christian, even if you're a Christian, I believe that the Lord might judge you through sickness because he did that in 1 Corinthians 11, guys. That's just that. That's just what I believe. I see it in the Bible. I see it in the New Testament. I'm not making it up. That's you know. Go ahead and look for it yourselves. Um, I don't believe that everyone is supposed to be healed uh, because it is a curse that comes upon the sons of disobedience. And obviously, the majority of people are sons of disobedience. Jesus said, "The gate is narrow. Few will make it. Few will find it." So yeah, most people are supposed to be sick. Um, did Jesus go around healing the sick to show them the kingdom of God, to show them what forgiveness of sins looks like, to show them what being in covenant with God looks like, at peace with God, no longer an enemy looks like? Of course, he did that. He wants us to do the same thing. But that doesn't mean that everybody will continue in righteousness. A lot of people just continue in sin. Um, and God uses that as a uh, form of uh, punishment, of curse and of discipline. Listen, God uses sickness as a discipline to those who walk in unrighteousness, even in the church. Yes. However, I think he chooses who to give it to, when and how. I don't think we can we can tell somebody, oh, 
You cheated on your wife, God's going to make you sick because we don't know if that's the discipline God wants to, use, wants to use. God sees the end from the beginning. He knows what that person needs to repent and to turn. So he might just send somebody to preach at him. He might just expose him on Facebook. He, 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 he might just speak to him, convict him, and know that he's going to repent so he doesn't really need God to make him sick to be able to give him that fear of the Lord. Does that make sense? Like God knows what and who and where and when. Like this is God, omniscient all knowing he sees the future the end from the beginning he knows who's going to turn away and who's not who he knows who's going to repent because of a sickness he knows that who's going to repent as soon as they sin they don't even need god to discipline them does that make sense so i don't think everyone gets that type of discipline right only those he knows that needed um will get straightened up in, in in that form in that way um and then they'll get back under that fear of the lord mindset again which is what he wants amen he says he disciplines those he loves those who are his just like a, a, a earthly father does if we have the common sense to know that our animal our, our you know our beast you know our horse uh, our dog or even our children need a little whooping so that it hurts them and they're like oh i don't want to do that again that hurt you know my father might get me next time the same way or even harder if we have the common sense to know that punishment helps fix and resolve issues of discipline with our children or animals how much wiser is god and yeah he does that sometimes i'm not gonna lie he does that i wish he didn't but he does and we have to take the bible for what the bible is amen i think healing is a blessing of the new covenant guys but wealth is something that we shouldn't focus on or be concerned with treasures in heaven not on earth should be our focus because that's what the bible teaches right that's what jesus taught so um to me i don't think it's fair that these american gospel documentary people are so confidently um connecting healing and money sickness and contentment like we shouldn't connect wealth and health even though the prosperity gospel preachers do connect these two the bible doesn't connect these two the bible connects healing with righteousness healing with not being cursed right the bible does say that we were redeemed from the curse of the law doesn't it and in deuteronomy we see how sickness and illnesses and disease is a curse of the law doesn't it there's a connection there, right? But wealth, wealth, riches, we see Jesus talk about not loving money, how hard it is for a rich men to enter the kingdom of God way more than any type of sign of prosperity or wealth. So we can't connect wealth and health, okay? Um, or the need to not love money with the need to not expect healing. We are expect. We are supposed to expect healing. Jesus said, you speak to the mountain, you tell it to move. By his stripes, we're healed. Jesus, listen, guys, just with one scripture, Jesus said, uh, it says, he gave them authority over all demons, over sicknesses and diseases. Jesus said, I give you authority to, heal, to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. Come on, guys. You think we're not we're not supposed to expect healing? He never said, I give you the authority to get money. Behold, I send you out to be rich. He never said that. So we can throw away the wealth gospel, but we should never throw away the good health gospel because that's included with righteousness, with being blessed, being under grace, being in covenant with God. And I'm saying this because I see it in the Bible. I don't agree with none of these preachers that this documentary is calling out. I don't listen to Kenneth Copeland. I don't listen to Ty White. I don't listen to Benny Hinn. Um, uh, I don't listen to Joseph Prince. I don't listen to Joe's. I don't listen to none of these people. You understand? I'm getting in front of Bibles. I'm not saying I believe in healing because somebody... No, it's in the Bible. The whole wealth, riches, love, uh, the money thing, that's not gospel. But good health, it is. Trust me, just take, take another look at it. <laughs> take another look at it without these teachers telling you what to believe, and you'll see, okay? They stated that miracles and that the gifts of the Holy Spirit are necessary or important in our preaching and evangelism, okay? Which, just by looking at the four gospel accounts in the book of Acts, we see that's so incorrect. What do you mean the gifts of the Spirit and miracles shouldn't be 
you know, seen when somebody's preaching the gospel and witnessing the people of, uh, of Christ. We see that everywhere from Matthew to the book of Acts. Like, what's happening? If, 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 if God thought it necessary to manifest in miraculous ways back in those days, why wouldn't he do that today and find it necessary to manifest by his spirit in those same ways today when people are still in need of believing in Christ and getting born again? Huh? People still need healing today. They're still sinners just like they were sinners in the days of the apostles. So why did they have to stop? Did the flesh change? Did the Holy Spirit change? Did they have a different Holy Spirit than we do? Because the Bible says that the Holy Spirit is the Lord and that the Lord never changes. So if God doesn't change, then his ways of manifesting don't change either. Through believers, through people, aren't we his temples? You see? We've been believing a lie, right? The cessationist stuff is not biblical, guys. Um, the miraculous is God manifesting according to 1 Corinthians, okay? And guess what? 1 Corinthians 12, 1 Corinthians 14, it doesn't say that after Paul, it was going to be over. That after the apostle John, it was going to be over. God never changes, guys. So be careful with these ideas that reject the power and the ability of the Holy Spirit within us. Okay, because the Holy Spirit is the reason why we can bear good fruit. And the same way, he's the reason why we can lay hands on the sick and see them recover, according to Mark 16, guys. They could see this is the thing with this documentary. They connected being sick with the suffering that Christians are supposed to endure in this world. The Bible does teach suffering. It doesn't teach you're always going to be comfortable and fine in, in a mansion, uh, you know, drinking, uh, you know, wine and, you know, uh, being, you know, fancy, eating filet mignon. No, it says we're going to suffer, right? We're going to be persecuted, right? They're going to hate us because they hated our master, right? Our His servants are not better than him, right? So this is the thing, though. Instead of persecution, imprisonment, death because of our faith in Christ, being hated by the world, temptations, offenses, being confronted by haters of God, instead of this documentary mentioning these as the true biblical sufferings that the Bible talks about, it connects sickness to suffering. The Bible doesn't say <laughs> that sickness is one of the sufferings, okay? The Bible doesn't teach that sickness is a suffering for the righteous. The righteous get rewarded and blessed, not cursed, okay? You want to know the difference between a suffering and a in, in, in a curse, the curse comes from God. A suffering comes from the fact we're in a fallen world with evil people all around us that hate God. Okay, so if the government persecutes us, it's because that's part of the suffering. But if a sickness comes upon us, that's because it's a curse and a, and a discipline from God, the only one who can bring sickness and illness. Okay, God takes away the sickness and he puts it. God In, in the Bible, we see God closing wombs, not only opening wombs, right? <laughs> you see, the listen, suffering is not a curse because it comes by the hand of ungodly and evil people of this world. It doesn't come from our relationship with God. Suffering doesn't come from our relationship with God. It comes from the fact that we're in a fallen world with fallen people. That's why it involves being hated and being killed and being thrown into prison, right? That's why it comes with that stuff. Might come with uh, with poverty. Might come with something like that. But sickness comes from God, not from the world. Not you know a government a governor can't give me a sickness, <laughs> right? A dictator, an atheist can't give me that. It has to be the Lord, right? And if you're right with Him, if you're blessed, then why would He give it? That's that's part of a discipline and a curse and a repercussion and consequence. If you're right, why would he punish you? You already have enough to deal with, with this world, right? With the imprisonments and with the, with the sufferings, with the temptations of your own flesh to overcome sin. Come on, guys. That's not biblical. Think about it. The couple that used to be atheists, right? Um, the couple that used to be work workout holics, because that's what a lot of people are, workout holics, fit ho holics. They're addicted to fitness. It's, it's ungodly. It's based on vanity, right? Um, Matt Chandler. Justin Peters, Paul Washer, all people in this documentary, they've all experienced crazy disease. So I don't know about you, but I don't feel comfortable listening to them when it comes to sickness, when it has to do with God healing, because it's, it, listen, it's hard for me 
not to imagine that they're speaking like this because they haven't been healed. Because of their lack of experience with the power and blessing of God. Okay, I'm not talking financial stuff. That's not gospel. But the healing part. Jesus said, if you believe, it will happen. If you ask with faith, it will happen. If you ask with good intentions, it will happen. If you ask according to God's will, it will happen. Every time Jesus was asked, is your will? He said, it is my will. So be healed. Okay? Just by the persistence of that Samaritan woman. He still did a miracle for her. Even though he said he only came for the, for, 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 for the people of Israel. <laughs> That's why he taught about seeking and finding, knocking and the door being open to you. Asking and receiving because of consistency and persistency in prayer. And then he said, you will tell a mountain to move and it will move if you don't doubt in your heart. When that man came to him after he was uh, up there in the mountain with Peter, James, and John spending time with God, he encountered Elijah and Moses. He came down from the mountain the next day. The father came up to Jesus like, hey, man, your disciples couldn't even deliver my son from demon. Heal him. Deliver him. And Jesus, what did he say? Faithless generation. The problem was faith. No faith. Lack of faith. He delivered the boy right away. That means it was his will. The fact that they couldn't do it didn't mean it wasn't his will. It means that they didn't have enough faith to do it. Like is the case in a lot of these people's lives. Just because that person couldn't heal you, that minister couldn't heal you, or you couldn't believe for yourself, doesn't mean it's not God's will. There just wasn't enough faith. You know? And you can get butthurt about it, but the truth is going to hurt. You know? We got to man up. Just because somebody tells you you don't have enough faith, that doesn't mean they don't love you and they're being harsh. You just got to, come on, get more spiritual. Get in the Bible. Come on, start praying. Be persistent in your prayers. Believe for it. If you would stop working out so much and, and start really seeking God and seeking his kingdom and righteousness, you know, you might start believing for that miracle and for that healing. If you get out of that bad doctrine church, bad um, biblical teaching denomination, you might start believing and expecting it. And if you believe it, you might see it, guys. Come on. Jesus said, faithless generation. And then his disciples asked him, how come we couldn't deliver that boy? What did he say? Oh, it wasn't the will of God uh, a day ago, four hours ago. No. He said, these kinds don't go out other than by praying and fasting. That means they weren't being spiritual enough. They didn't have the, the clarity of mind and the faith and confidence in the power of God to tell them demons to get out and expect them to get out. Okay? It's the same thing with healing. Okay, this might be a little too much for some of you guys, but it's in the Bible. Like, I mean, you know, this is Christianity. You know, whatever the Bible says, that's what we take as normal. And that's normal. It was normal for Jesus. He healed people left and right. So did the 70. So did the 12. And I'm sure Judas was one of them. <laughs> yeah. So if you might, if you might be holier in your conduct than Judas, you should start expecting some healings and, and deliverances and things like that because he probably saw a lot of that, okay? So let's just let's just take whatever the, it's in the Bible as normal, okay? <laughs> Listen, guys, it's, it's, it's hard to imagine that they're speaking like this because they haven't been healed or they're speaking like this because um, they haven't, you know, ex seen what the Bible shows. But just because your experience doesn't look like the Bible doesn't mean that your theology has to change and get in line with your experience. No, your, your theology has to be in line with the Bible, guys, okay? You, you either believe this because you haven't been healed or you haven't been healed because you believe this. You might have not got healed because your theology is all wrong, guys. So be careful, guys. I mean, if you don't expect God to heal you, then I'm sorry. Look, I hope you get healed, but even if you don't, you stay the course, you continue in the faith, you re you reject your carnal desires, I'll, I'll see you in the kingdom one day. That's what's most important, right? That's that's what's most important, you know? The 70 came back boasting and, 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 you know, parading the fact that they saw demons cast out and healings and miracles, and Jesus was like, look, guys, just be happy and focus on the fact that your names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Your names are written in heaven. So... So let's celebrate on that fact if, 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 if we continue in the faith, if we continue uh, obeying the Lord and, 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 and denying ourselves and living for God and living for Jesus. Amen? Not denying him in front of man so that he doesn't deny us um, in front of the angels. However, 
Um, I, I can't afford to think like you because I expect God's healing. And I want to stay healed. I don't think wanting to be healed is unrighteous. I think wanting to be rich, wanting to have money, wanting to be successful and have fame or, or not even have fame, just have a big house and a big car. I think all that is unrighteous. It has to do with selfishness and vanity uh, and lust, the lust of the eye or the pride of life, right? Or the lust of the flesh. But wanting to be healed, there's nothing ungodly about that. That's why God heals so many people and he's God. So God leave for sure, <laughs> right? I, I can't afford to think like that, okay? Jesus said, if you speak to a mountain and believe in your heart, it will move. So I can't help to think that the problem here is their beliefs. Someone had to teach you to not believe God for healing because all over the New Testament, we see Jesus giving healing and we see his disciples healing the sick by the power of the spirit. So I'm sorry, I can't get my theology from this documentary because it's too unbiblical. Okay, and neither should you. We see we see sickness in the Bible as a curse or as a repercussion of unrighteousness and not as an inevitable thing. If God doesn't have anything against you, the only thing stopping you from being healed is your fear and doubt, guys. Come on. Jesus said it. The mountain will not move if you doubt. Unfortunately, brother uh, Nabil uh, Qureshi, he died through his illness. He died before this documentary was put out, unfortunately. You know, and I, I just don't want that to be the case for more ministers. I don't want that to be the case for more brothers and sisters of uh, in Christ like you guys. So let's start believing right doctrine so that we can actually have faith and expect the blessings of God. Like it would suck for you to be, you know, living a righteous life and still not reap the blessings of it. You know, you have to start believing, believing, believing you're in, 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 the, in covenant with God, believing that you've been redeemed from the curse of the law, believing you've been redeemed and justified by faith. Believe that you're no longer an enemy of God, but at peace with God. Believe that there's no condemnation against you if you're walking in the Spirit. Okay? Come on, guys. Galatians 5 talks about the fruit of the Spirit. And then at the end, it says, against these, there is no law. So if you walk in the fruit of the Spirit, there's nothing against you. God is not mad at you if you're keeping His ways. Come on. Stop expecting to be cursed. I don't want to see more people die that don't have to because they're not unrighteous or because God is not wanting to judge them, right? Come on. I, I, I can't believe like these people, guys. I don't know about you. I can't believe like them. Because to be honest, I don't see enough scriptural proof for what they believe concerning sickness. And I, and I also don't want the results they've been getting through their theology. Come on. The, the proof is in the pudding. Like, I'm not just not listening to these people because what they're teaching is so unbiblical. I'm also not listening to them because I don't want the experience that they have. I don't want the results of their theology. I want the results of Paul's theology or Christ's theology or James' theology. I want the response of their theology. I don't want the response of these preachers' theology who are getting cancer and stuff left and right. I'm good on that. I'd rather believe God, okay? You could call it what you want to call it. I call it believing the Bible. They said that, um, they said another thing. They said that God ordains everything for our good, hmm. um, including sickness. But Jesus said to the man that he healed once, he said, sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. Jesus only spoke what the father wanted, the father's will. So that means God didn't want that man to sin and God didn't want that man to get another sickness. <laughs> So how could God ordain everything for good if there's some things that he doesn't want to happen? You got to think about that, okay? The Bible says that Christ went around healing people who were oppressed by the devil. So I would advise you to, I would advise you to not listen to these guys. Don't listen to the, this couple um, because they're basically accepting their sicknesses. They're accepting their sicknesses. And it, it, if God wants you free from those sicknesses, and you're accepting them, you're accepting something that's not God's will, okay? Um, it, now, if, if you have those sicknesses because it's God's discipline, then what you need to do is repent and ask God for mercy and ask God to heal you, okay? Um, if we believe that something is from God, right? If we believe something is from God, how can we have faith to move it? <laughs> if you believe that sickness was placed on you because of God, then how can you even believe for God to take it away if he's the one who put it on you? Unless he put it on you because you need to repent, then you can repent and really have faith for him to remove it. But you can't expect for God to take something away from you if you feel like he put it on you. That completely annuls the ability to have faith, with contra which contradicts what Jesus taught, right? <laughs> you know, 
James says, if there's anybody sick, bring them to the elders. They're going to lay hands on them. And the prayer of faith, not doubt, right? Not if it's not the prayer of if it's God's will, the prayer of faith will heal the sick. So the problem with a lot of you guys is that you're not expecting healing because you don't know what God's will is. You don't understand the Bible. You don't understand what the gospel is because you have bad teachers like these documentary guys. Okay, I'm sorry. You have to believe the Bible and the only way you can believe something is if you know what it actually says and you don't just know sermons and preachings on YouTube and from seminaries, okay? So how can we feel convicted enough to repent and to change up whatever we're doing wrong um, to receive such a discipline of wrath from God if we think that it's not a discipline, it's just or it's just happening because I'm a human, right? Or it's, or it's my calling. It's my calling to suffer a sickness. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm that type of prophet. You know, I, I, I'm the prophet of sickness. That's my calling. No, your calling is to preach the gospel, make disciples, baptize people in the name of Jesus, evangelize, witness. Come on, disciple your children. That's your calling. Your calling is to serve Jesus preaching the gospel. Your calling is not to bear sickness. There's enough sinners out there in the world bearing sickness and it's not bringing glory to God. Let's stop. <laughs> you know, we're making up scripture, guys. Um, some, so, so, so my point there was if we believe God put it on us, we can't believe for him to take it away. Okay. Um, and if we believe that he put it on us just because it's a suffering, not because we're in sin, then how can we repent from that? He wants us to believe for it. If, if, if he wants us free from it, um, or he wants us to repent of our sins and leave that lifestyle if he's the one to put it on us. Amen. So something we should consider when watching this documentary, guys, is that the main party speaking and sharing their stories with us consists of a woman who got very, very ill after giving birth before she was a believer. The key word, before she was a believer. And another key word, living for herself. Okay. She got ill living for herself. She got ill before she was a believer. All right. Um. And another one was a man who was born with cerebral palsy and didn't get healed at a Word of Faith conference when he was a boy and probably not a believer, right? His dad was, um, but he was probably not a believer. And if so, there's, listen, guys, you have to agree with the Word of God. And if somebody, a bad preacher, a bad pastor offends you, does something horrible, they have to answer to God, but you sh that's not an excuse for you to stop believing the Bible. Just, Jesus, he, he treated me like this, and he believed in healing, so that's why I haven't believed in healing, Jesus. That's not a good reason, okay? Lastly, uh, another person was Benny Hinn's nephew. He witnessed all the luxury, all the money, all the uh, money hungry, money loving adventures by traveling with his uncle in his younger days. So he's like probably traumatized, right? He's he's out for blood. He's he's out for vengeance, right? Um, so all of these stories they come from extremities. Born with cerebral palsy, you know, word of faith preacher, you know, did some crazy stuff. Uh, atheist couple, love with their in love with their bodies, got very ill while pregnant. Um, or after giving birth, whatever it was, and then Benny, his nephew, that's, you know, enough said, because, you know, he's like probably the biggest televangelist that we know about today, right? So all these come from extremities, serious sickness with life, lasting effects, witnessing the, the glamorous um, lifestyle uh, of the biggest televangelist that we know. Um, so ask yourself, are there claims and perspectives based on scripture? Are there claims based on the Bible? Or are their claims based on their own personal experiences, stories, and trauma? Hmm. That's what we got to ask ourselves. And I think we know the answer if we watch this documentary. Okay? We have to be very careful where we get our theology from, guys. There is a big, big confusion about what you need to do to be born again. Okay? There's a big confusion about what will grant you access to God's kingdom. A lot of people are saying, oh... You need to give money to ministries. You need to give money to preachers. A lot of people say, all you need to do is believe, you know, but what does the Bible say, guys? The Bible says you have to repent. You have to believe in Jesus Christ. You have to start following him and deny yourself. You have to have faith that has good works. Come on, guys. The Bible says that to be born again, we must believe in Christ. We must repent of our sins. We must leave our lifestyle in sin and follow Jesus instead. And we must be baptized. That's what the Bible says. 
We don't earn or work for that at all, right? We don't work for Jesus' blood. We don't work for our initial um, born-again experience and justification. But the Bible says that many will come to Jesus saying, Lord, Lord, we did all this in your name. You see that in his name? That means confessing people. That, what does that sound like? Today's Christians, we, we confess him, right? And, but, but this is the thing. He said, and he, it says, and he will remove them from where he is because they're doers of iniquity. That key word is doers. That means action, workers of iniquity. That means he's not going to judge them because of their confession and so-called faith. He's going to judge them because of the way they live their life, their actions. That's why James is so true. Faith without works is dead. Jesus said it himself. If someone is confessing Jesus, right? And they're doing ministry, just like in this scripture, Jesus is referring to people who are going to go up to him saying, we prophesied in your name. We did miracles in your name. We did this and that in your name. We cast out demons in your name. If he's referring to people who are really in ministry in his name, and he's going to tell them, depart from me, right? Then why wouldn't he say the same thing to people who are not working miracles, not doing ministry, not prophesying, but still doing iniquity, still living in sin? Of course, he's going to say the same thing, regardless of their confession and their so-called faith, regardless of their church attendance, okay? He's telling this to people who are confessing his name and doing ministry in his name. That's what we call faith in being a Christian today. And he's still telling them to depart. <laughs> they will not have eternal life. There's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth, right? But Jesus said that they will have to depart from him because of their evil works, not because of their lack of confession or faith that he is Lord. They confess that he's Lord. They just didn't have the works to prove that they believe he's Lord. Amen. Because at the end of the day, the Bible states that even demons believe in God. Even demons believe in God. So that's faith. But are they saved through faith? Are demons saved? Are, are we going to see demons in heaven, in the kingdom of God? Absolutely not. So if their faith didn't justify them, then what makes us think that just, oh, just confessing in Jesus or just believing that God is real, that God is a real entity, that there is a higher power, just believing that doesn't get you saved, doesn't get you in the kingdom of God? No, because just believing in God is is still considered unrighteous if your life is still unrighteous. But if you're truly following Jesus, you're going to change the way you live and apply the teachings that he taught. Obey the commandments that he gave. Amen? That's what Christianity is about. So those are the things that I disagree with the most in the American Gospel documentary. Here, you know, I mentioned some things that I did agree with. Um, overall, in conclusion, guys, if you want biblical doctrine if you want something biblical that's going to teach you how to live the life of a christian how to walk like christ how to do the will of god don't watch this documentary don't listen to these teachers and preachers um and, and ministers who are getting their stuff from people's experience from people's hurt from people's trauma or just from teachers who didn't really see the bible clearly as it is we have to get the bible and the scriptures out instead of putting our thoughts into it and making it look like what we want it to look like or what someone else wants it to look like for us amen if this video helped you if you agree with this video if this taught you something if this made you wonder some things that you used to be, that you've been believing or that you thought you agree with in the documentary like this video share it Help your Facebook friends, help your um, Twitter friends see this video. Subscribe to this channel. If you disagree with this video, of course, you can still put the thumbs down, <laughs> of course, and, and leave a comment. If you agree, let me know what you agree with. Let me know what helped you and blessed you. If you disagree with it, let me know where you think I'm wrong, where you think I, I missed it, and, and we can talk about it, right? We could talk about it. We could put some scriptures on it. Um, if you're, you know, if you're respectful, if you're walking in the fruit of the spirit, we can continue that conversation. Um, and we'll grow. We'll grow together. Amen. So bless you guys. Love y'all. Let's grow in Christ. Let's stay biblical. Let's stay in good doctrine. Let's continue in the faith and let's live according to what Jesus taught, what he modeled and what he promise Christianity will look like for his disciples. Let's get our theology from the Bible and not from people's experience or lack of, okay? Let's grow and believe God for the things he told us to believe in, and let's leave everything that's not in the Bible aside, regardless of who tells us it's right. Bless you guys. Love y'all.